Welcome, 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 sports fans. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the third installment, if you will, of the Sports Couple Perspective. Right here on IE Sports Radio, your refuge for all that is sports. What's going on, y'all? It's me, your boy, Larry B. And Cecilia. And we are ready to rock and roll tonight. We have a pretty serious matter. Of course, the first two matters have really been pretty serious. But tonight, a little bit more because it's a touchy subject. What are we, about to, what are we talking about tonight? None other than safety in sports. This, of course, brought forth, inspired by the movie Concussion, starring Will Smith. And this was a tough one. I actually avoided watching this movie for a very long time until Cecilia said she wanted to watch it last night, of course. Let that be the one movie she landed on, me showing her every football movie out there. And the one she lands on is this one. So, I, uh, it's okay. I wanted to, I, I've been, I low key wanted to watch this one too. But it's just scary because I'm an active player and it's just scary to see these things. So, uh, Dr. Amalu, of course, a legend, unfortunately uncovered, well, no, fortunately uncovered an unfortunate thing, uh, which we know now as CT. It kind of sucks. It really does suck for all the players who lost their lives. But now... Science has proven, through God of course, that things can be okay and hopefully there is a bright future. So, I hope you guys are ready. We got to talk about that. A little bit of NFL playoffs coming your way. Are you excited, babe? Yep. Sure am. We got to go in for y'all tonight. Sorry for the late start, but I hope you like our new intro music. You feeling it, babe? You feeling yeah, it? I really like it. You like hope it? you all enjoy it, too. You like it? A little, 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 little groovy little beat. Yeah, a little something, <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Or not, fine. Smart. Just kidding. <laughs> With that said, y'all, welcome to the show. We're going to have ourselves a fun one tonight. It is 7.25 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Go grab something delicious and tune in for tonight's show. Alrighty, there we are, y'all. Hopefully, you enjoyed it, our new little tune there. Like I said, we had we, we had a little time. We had we had to take two episodes to really uh, find a song that fit us. But uh, yeah, I think I think it worked out pretty good. Don't you think? Yeah, I think we found the one. I think so too. That's how I feel with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I know. But with that said, y'all, appreciate y'all for jumping in the chat room. Of course, Taryn showing the love as always. And, uh, yeah, Taryn's already jumping in with the reference to, to Jelani J.B. Bodie show, the Wait a Minute show. is Oh, boy, serious matter. I guess I won't be using the I'll see another loser line. Yeah, tonight's a little more serious than that. If anything, we saw a winner. Right, baby? Yeah. Definitely a tough one. Good evening to you as well, Mr. Andrew Hagenball. And appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. So, with that said... The show ran a little bit over, so we apologize for the little bit of a late start. I'm sorry, the movie ran a little bit over. I guess I calculated that wrong. Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, it's been a crazy week. We've just been trying to get everything going. Uh, and, of course, I mean, just just kind of a rough one um, for us, but it's all good. We're getting it together. We're getting everything going, and we have another day of life, and that's all thanks to God. Right, baby? Yeah, exactly. So, with that said, y'all, let's rock and roll and get things going with tonight's uh, well, tonight's topic, of course, which is safety, player safety. Now, there are two sides to this. A lot like, well, last week we went completely one-sided with the athletes and <laughs> yeah, and should be getting paid, but tonight there actually is two sides to this, and it's kind of it's kind of a tough one. So, our movie uh, that we reviewed tonight, and tonight's not going to be like a where we just. Um, talk about the movie at the end and everything, we're going to kind of in- just jumble it all together, because I feel like this goes this goes hand in hand with the movie itself, so instead of the review at the end, we're actually just going to start it off first, so of course, Will Smith, of course starring Will Smith here, I will play Dr. Bennett Amalu, he was the doctor in the early 2000s, 2002 to be precise, to discover 
this brain disease from too many hits to the head called CTE. And unfortunately for many players, they would take their own lives. This including the movie Circles Around Mike Webster, a legendary center for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and plenty other players. And unfortunately at the very end it showed Junior Seau when he committed suicide. And it's a trip to think my gosh, all these players, you know, they're shooting themselves in the heart. Well, why something was wrong in the head and they wanted their brain to be the science. They wanted science to see this. So, um, that's just of it, but the ins and outs and, and all of the craziness that went on with Dr. Amalu and the unfortunate, um, the horrible things he had to face. The NFL rejected him. His boss got re- got indicted. I mean, so much crap happened. And it ended up being, you know, something that worked out in the end where, you know, his, his research was 100% correct. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of bad things had to happen. And they had to move from Pittsburgh to Lodi, California. I guess so many things happened. But uh, overall, that's just the gist of it. I'm going to let Cecilia kind of give you a little more of the ins and outs of the movie. But um, first, babe, start us off with, with your overall thoughts of this movie. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, it really had opened my eyes to the possible head injuries that not only just football takes, but... Other sports like hockey and um, what was the other one that we said? Which one? Boxing for sure. Boxing, yeah. Um, I mean, all those take serious hits to the head, and which is very dangerous. Um, you never realize how fragile our you know our brains are. But um, it was really good. I liked it. Opens your eyes to a whole new light, and just the information that it gives is pretty cool too. Um, and it's based on a true story, so it makes it even better, like I always say. It really does. We've had a couple of those so far. So, yeah, um, and of course, I mean, you, we couldn't get through this chat room tonight without, rest in peace, the great Junior Seau. Mm-hmm. The Junior Seau was, there will never be another Junior Seau, ever. The man was a legend. I, I mean, I idolized him. And this is coming from a Raider fan, I idolized him like Charger. Mm-hmm. Okay, that just goes to show you the hate between the Raiders and Chargers is as real as it gets. But I still idolized him. I didn't care. The guy is well because I mean they're good players. I mean they amazing. show what they're made of. And he played for USC before, before he went to the, the NFL. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, as a linebacker, you're a main. Well, no one. Mean, okay, I don't want to stop saying unfortunately when I don't mean to say it in that time. But as a linebacker, your main goal is to destroy whoever has the ball. Mm-hmm. At full speed. And he played that position for, what, 18, 20 years in the NFL? And to think of all the years he played before that, he retired close to 40 or right around 40 and took his last couple years later. Yeah, so crazy, so young. Sad, isn't it? Yeah, very. But, unfortunately, now I can use it, unfortunately, these many hits to the head can cause a lot of damage. And unfortunately, it's very. And I'm gonna stop saying unfortunately tonight. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count right now. I've said it like a thousand times, but it's just it is though. I mean, I know it sounds kind of funny, but it's true, y'all. Tonight, the word unfortunate is like key um, because it is very unfortunate. So I'm gonna try and get away from that word right now. But sadly, uh, it you know CTE has led to a lot of loss of life of these. What players. does CTE stand for for the people who don't? know what that means cte okay this is a crazy word that i'm gonna try really hard to pronounce i have to literally google this right now because i forgot exactly the word but or how to say it but cte is absolutely the the heart the easiest way to say this is is it causes mental issues it like which... resembles uh, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's and dementia, basically. Which is really sad. But it's not it. It's different. Yeah, it's it's a very unfortunate disease. And here we go again. Gotta stop saying unfortunately. But um, I'll tell you guys right now. This has been. Uh, I knew it. It has been eye opening, but still, I knew it from before. We know what the we know what happens. We know what CTE is. Uh, but it is a real thing. So, um, so the actual term is chronic traumatic uh, encephalopathy. Oh my gosh. Uh, how do you say that? 
encephalopathy. Ensop- 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 oh my gosh, that is hard to say. But yes, uh, it is a condition that, as Cecilia was saying, resembles Alzheimer's in dementia. Uh, but Dr. Amalu knew that this wasn't this wasn't common. He said it. They can't. These men can't have this. Mm-mm. They can't have Alzheimer's. They're too young. Yeah, it's crazy. So, plus it it takes a toll on their body. Like, um, what was Mike Webster? Mike Webster. Um, he looked older. Um, because I've seen real pictures of him too, and um, yeah, like the doctor said that you know. He did not look 50. He looked like, you know, he was in his 60s or something like that. Or 70s. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it takes a toll on their body as well. Like, it ages them fast. And you know what's really sad about this, babe? Is it's such a great game. Football is such a great game. But sadly, it's probably the most brutal. Mm -hmm. The most violent. Yes, we can say that UFC is pretty violent. Uh, yeah, it's a fist fight. It's a street fight. Boxing is pretty gosh dang violent, too. Mm-hmm. But when he was saying, when Dr. Amalu was explaining in the... Uh, well, he was explaining to, I believe, the doctor. I forgot who that was he was going to do, but he, had, he was writing on the board saying that, like, the, like the receivers and, like, the safeties, like, the, you know, the guys who are out there running full speed, mm-hmm. it's equivalent to a sledgehammer to the helmet. Yeah. You, I mean, you gotta really take that into context, right, babe? Yeah. A sledgehammer. Think of that. A full swing sledgehammer to a person wearing a helmet that is made of hard plastic on their head with padding inside of it. I don't care how strong that helmet is, that sledgehammer is gonna win. Yeah, definitely. So, you think of this horrible... Like, it's just so hard for me to talk about this because I play this game, like, and I understand it. I know I've used my head. I know what it feels like. And I've had my bell rung a few times, and I've also rang some bells. I personally can't say I've ever had a concussion. But I might have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It might have been very minor. I don't know. But what I do know is, is... Safety first. Safety is a big thing. Yeah, definitely. So, quick and dirty. Or not even quick and dirty. We can, I mean, you know, but... um, So, babe, what are your thoughts after this movie? Give us your 100% thoughts on the game of football after you've seen this. Um, I mean, I think it's so cool and everything, but I would like for everyone to be more responsible and be careful about it and realize that, yeah, football might be fun, but they need to take the precautions of um, trying to prevent hurting themselves in a bad way. And there has been lots of things that have come about in the last decade or so. So uh, let's go and take a look, quick look, look here at the chat room and get back to it. So let's see here. Um, Taryn says, A plus for you too, the original song, yeah, um, you have unlocked one Taryn Rodriguez video produced, video, produced video. (laughs) Okay, Taryn, um, Andrew says here, Sorensen should have been penalized for helmet to helmet, Uh hit on Rashard Higgins, I'll show you that hit later, brutal, Uh brutal helmet to helmet, Dirty Dan. Oh, boy. So, we have here, um, rest in peace. That's right. Rest in everlasting peace, Junior Seau. One of the greatest ever, of course, Taryn. Talking about him. Andrew also says here, rest in peace, Junior Seau. I watched that movie way too many times. Makes you take concussions very seriously. Oh, it definitely does. It does. And, babe, don't think for one second, though, that other athletes don't get concussions. Andrew, go ahead and tell us. You played soccer for the better half of your life, much like I've played football. Go ahead and tell us, uh, Andrew, how many concussions are actually in soccer. Would you believe that if I told you? No. I mean, yes. Now, after watching this, yes. Okay. There's a, uh, there's a, a play in soccer, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up on YouTube, because I'm not sure. Once again, I'm, this isn't saying Cecilia doesn't know sports or whatever, but I just want to want her to see this. So, this is called a corner kick. Okay. Corner kick. 
Andrew, go ahead and tell us, man, all about uh, concussions and soccer, dude. Because I mean, and trust me, they come from they come from all angles, baby. But this is uh, this, this is just to let everybody know that soccer actually, I mean, any sport you can get hurt in any well, sport, yeah. but head injuries are actually a thing in a lot of sports. So you wouldn't know, but so the ball's just kicked, and all these guys go up at one time, and he actually made that one. But you see what they see how they all go? Okay, well, I guess that was a bad example. But another bad example. These are corner kicks that actually got made. But what happens is corner kicks in soccer are a... Okay, so basically how the play goes is the ball gets kicked from the corner of the field. When the ball goes up, all these athletes are standing in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Okay. When the ball goes out, as we see here in this YouTube video, the ball is now kicked. All these athletes are in the middle. And the point is to get the ball to one of your players so they can either kick it or header mm-hmm. it in. See how they're all right there? And see how they all jumped? Yeah. And see how we actually hit it in? Mm-hmm. Okay. These guys actually all jump at the same time. Yeah. They can't use their hands, can they? No. What are they using? Their heads. How many times do you think they jump side by side and ram their head into another guy's head? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's scary when you see these guys jump up and then just one drops limp to the ground. Because they actually, literally, both went for the same ball. And it's like two people grab each other and just went smack with their mm-hmm. heads in the air. And you see them just fall and they just drop. Ugh. Guess what? There's no helmet there this time. Mm-mm. At least in football, there's a helmet. These are two skulls that are clashing together. See, stuff like that, though. Like, How many times, uh, too? You know what a scissor kick is? No. Or at least a, a bicycle I'm sorry, a kick. Bicycle kick. A bicycle kick is pretty dangerous because I've seen this happen. I haven't seen it, but unfortunately, um, it's just something that has happened before. But a bicycle kick is where the player will basically drop their body and kick in air. Meaning that the entirety of that person's leg and body is uh, moving forward. See this? Oh, okay. See how he drops his body? I just didn't know the word for it. Well, guess what? Right here? One more time. Let's take a look at the kick. Sit over here. Bicycle. Boom. See uh-huh. how he drops his body? Uh-huh. Well, there has been times... Where they where, get kicked in the head? Where there's a person's head right there. And that, and that cleat... <sighs> That cleat is right there where the ball should be. And they just took that entire kick to the back of the head or in the head. Oh, and I've man. seen it. I've seen it. And it is ugly. And you see these guys just drop. Or girls. Because they, they play mm-hmm. too. Yeah, and you see them playing. just drop. I mean, they just drop. Oh. You're getting that force of a kick to the head. And that's just a head. Like, once again, there's no helmet. It's just a head. Like, yeah, there's no protection there. No protection. Look at that. Boom. Imagine that kick, but to a head. So it's very common. You've seen it. I've seen it happen. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I know that it's happened. And it's unfortunate. So Andrew in the chat room, I'm curious to hear what he's got to say here because it's so true. Um, Oh, yeah, unfortunately I have. Years of soccer and me accidentally headbutting players or just standing in front of a shot and it hitting my head. I've had minor concussions, though not diagnosed. See? Oh, wow. I would still play, but feel very weird, and my coaches never took me out. Of course not. Of course not. Andrew was probably a hell of a player, and they didn't want to take him out, Mm -hmm. of course. So, then one day last year, I stood up from bed and just randomly passed out. Oh, man. And uh, hit my head on the corner of my bathroom vanity. (sighs) Oh. I was out for close to 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I mean, thanks for sharing that, even though that's... That was pretty rough there, Andrew. But yeah, soccer is in top three, is in the top three in concussions. Wow. But five to seven percent of worldwide registered players suffer at least one concussion in soccer. Wow. So a lot of athletes are, I mean, I'm telling you, see, see that? Like, that's that's pretty rough. Also, mm-hmm. hockey. We've seen, you've seen hockey hits. Mm-hmm. Those guys get checked. And mm-hmm. those girls, they play, once again, the women play too. Mm-hmm. These, these, they can take nasty hits to the head. A lot of these players can. How about the hardwood in basketball? They go up for a rebound, they drop, and they land wrong, mm-hmm. and they land on their head. That's hardwood. Your head yeah. is, at least, once again, you think about football, and you're like, well, football, yeah, it's nasty. They're trying to hit each other. Well, of course they are. But what about in the sports? They're not trying to hit each other, and there's no protection, and they actually take a hit to the head. 
Isn't that a little yeah. worse, you think? Mm-hmm. So now that I've brought that up and you've seen this movie, now what do you think about sports in general, Ben? I don't know. That's tough. Like, uh, <laughs> seeing all that and it's just the risk that people are willing to take, it's just... I don't know, like, <laughs> in a way I would stop sports so that there's no bad injuries, but at the same time, it, it sounds kind of silly, but I feel like there are precautions and some kind of rules and regulations that they can set to make sure, you know, to prevent these concussions a little bit. I mean, I know mm-hmm. that they can't fully take concussions out of the games, because, like, that would be impossible, but exactly. at least somehow to control them to a certain extent, Completely. so that a lot of players don't experience it too often. I completely agree, babe. We're going to take a quick look here. I will also want you to see, Taryn brought up, there's actually a lot of concussions in volleyball, too. I wouldn't, ooh, I wouldn't doubt that either. Those, I mean, the ball's flying up, so. Well, the ball's flying up, but these yeah. girls, well, no, it's not just girls, I mean, it's a game guys play, too, but well, yeah. these athletes actually die for that ball. Mm-hmm. And if they dive and they happen to land in the wrong place, they will smack their head against that hardwood very easily. And you see this. Take a look here at another YouTube video. Watching some of these dives. Look at these girls. Just look at that dive. See how mm-hmm. she just dove? Look at another, yeah. another dive. Look at that. Boom. She could have hit Dang. her head. She she launched herself mm-hmm. high. But that was probably about, what, five feet off the ground, you think, babe? Probably. Look at this. Look at, the, look at this girl. Dive. Dive. Look at this girl right here. Boom. She uh, had it. Now imagine. She, 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 she flew. <laughs> she flew. But imagine that, though. You see her head. You see her head. One more time. You see her head. She saved mm-hmm. it. But if she would have just had like a loose head and she would have landed, bam, that's a smack against the hardwood. Yeah. Hard. I mean, athletics, you're going to risk it, unfortunately. But uh, there's another unfortunate count tonight. Just have, a, have a count on me for unfortunate tonight, guys. But um, volleyball is up there, too. Taryn says in concussions. An average shot in soccer from a college slash professional player is anywhere from 65 to 75 Ooh. miles per hour. Oh, wow. Get hit with that. Get hit with that. And I don't oh, care if that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not you. I'm not, 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 not you. Hell no, not you. And if anybody wants to try and hit her with one, try me. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, but he's kidding, he's kidding, he's kidding. But I'm going to say, though, um, you see what I mean, though? That's that's a pretty Ooh. nasty hit. That's a... I would have never thought a ball would be that fast. How about those digs? There's how about... some power behind those. How then? about a serve from volleyball? How about when you're at net and spike that sucker and it's mm-hmm. in someone's face? Ugh. You think those serves... They, they it have... sucks that all those other sports, too, can't wear... Because I'm pretty sure that would get in their way, though. But it just sucks that there's no protection for their heads. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like they should figure out a way to protect their heads in in some way. It's true. Look at baseball. I've actually seen, and it is a scary, horrible thing Well, on they do TV. wear helmets, but the only time that they do is when they're batting. Well, what about when a picture takes one to the head? Yeah. I've seen that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I've seen this one girl in softball a couple years back uh, had to get reconstructive surgery because it hit her right here oh. and, and it like, broke her face a little bit. Like, Ooh. how sad is that? Mm-hmm. Poor thing. You get hit by, I mean, it's just unfortunate. I don't know if it should have reconstructive all the way, but I'm just saying, like, it's, uh-huh. it's a thing, you know? So, unfortunately, again, there's another count. But, I, I mean, once again, that's like the theme of tonight's show. It has to be because these are just the unfortunate things that can happen. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not trying to kill sports for everybody because we love sports and love competition and it's great. But it's just so tough because I love it earlier when we were watching the movie, Cecilia said something that was awesome. What? And she had brought up the risk factor, such as, like we would with the military. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot what I said, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what did I say? She said, and it's funny because actually Dr. Um, Amalu actually said it in the in the movie more later towards on. the end of the movie. But yeah, she's like, "See, we speak, we get each other, you know." But it's the truth because she said, "You know, it's true though. You know the risk going into the game. You know it." Like, well, they don't, they don't really. Well, now they know, but back then when he was still figuring out, yeah, that they didn't really know about concussions and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. But now that they know, yeah, sorry, go on though. No, it's true. I'll go on, baby. That's, that's perfect. No, it's very true. Continue. I forgot what else I was going to say. Though you you remember what I said? <laughs> so. She had said that you know when you're when you're going into this though the risk factor. That's the first, one of the first things you know the risk factor. You know these things. You know that things can happen to you. Well, later on though, when Doctor Amalu said it, it's like she, she yeah we get each other. She said that, but it's true. How how later on he just pretty much like you know he went into that. He did that but more in depth when he said that you know a lot of people 
like when a soldier goes to war or a sailor or an airman or a marine, you know, I mean, any of them can go into war. Yeah, they understand the price that they're going to pay. Yeah. There's a possibility of them dying. They might not come back. Whereas players, or, you know, they didn't understand at that time. But now that they know, they know what they're getting themselves into. And it, I guess it really is a risk that they have to be willing to take. It's so true. It is, and it's not the easiest thing, but, a lot, you know, military, they know they might not come back or come back much different than the one they left, than the way they left, and that's mm-hmm. sad, but it's the truth, it's the reality, and Dr. Amalu had said that, yeah, you know, you'd think you can break a bone or something playing football, but these players actually don't know they can damage the rest of their lives with brain trauma, with brain injuries, so it's really sad, you know, it really is. And let's go back to the chat room here, because a lot we got to read. We got to get back to this real, real quick here. So let's go ahead and head on down here, because a lot more. So, um, no, I agree, Taryn. At the end of the day, football is family owner of the field, absolutely. Oh, Taryn thinks he's funny. Cookies. Yeah, CTE, cookies, Taryn eats. <laughs> JK, but he says, no, it's a serious matter, and it is. But injuries are sadly a part of the game um, of football. As well as to everyone's dismay, you can't turn off injuries like Cameron no. Madden, and it's true. <laughs> you know you can't. So, but you can help prevent them to a certain extent, though. Oh, not you, maybe not prevent them, but like you know, contain them. Absolutely. And Terrence is here in the chat room. One of the most promising women's volleyball players, Haley Hudson or Hodson, I believe, had to medically retire because she got too many concussions. Oh. And Stanford doctors didn't give her the proper help advi- or slash advice and whatnot. Of course not. <laughs> because she's probably a freaking stud out there. And, well, why tell her she has a problem? That's what's sad, too, about, you know, this movie and just in real life in general is that they're not willing to take care of their players. And I feel like it really, it really just does come down to, I feel like I always say it, but I, it's the honest truth is that, unfortunately, it just comes down to money in, you know, the higher ups pockets and that's all they want they want the name the fame the money Mm -hmm. and they couldn't care less to take care of their players um but they need to realize too if they want to you know i know that you know players can be replaced just Mm -hmm. as easy but still i mean there's someone's daughter there's someone's son Mm -hmm. you know there's someone's family member i mean they're a person they Mm -hmm. should really take care of you know their players i feel like Especially if they want the game to last. I mean, I highly doubt games will ever Mm -hmm. discontinue, but yeah, it's just sad. No, I agree. And they should really be aware of these concussions and make up some kind of rules to them. I mean, I know that they probably have, but I'm pretty sure they don't really take it seriously. No, I agree. And it's sad because what do you really do? What do you do? You know, babe, we have kids in a few years. What are we going to do? Athletes are... Sorry, athletics are great for children. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. blessed that I got to play starting in high school, but I didn't play when I was younger, Mm -hmm. you know? But then again, maybe I would have been too burnt out by the time I got to high school. Maybe I wouldn't have turned out the way I had. But at the same time, look at these youngsters. They get out there, they're playing from when they're young. And Dr. Malu even said it. Like, Mike Webster suffered since the time he was a little boy all the way until he retired Mm -hmm. at 39. He took roughly 70,000 thousand hits to the head and he died 11 years after he retired at 50 years old Mm -hmm. 50 and it's sad too because it can't be diagnosed and then they get diagnosed with it when it's too late when sadly they pass away Mm -hmm. the only way to tell that you actually have it now i want to bring up a topic here that's a little and this is something that i've got to we will talk about this more, because we haven't even talked about him yet, but a player who actually did have CTE, they discovered, is a player by the name, and I don't really like to bring him up very much at all, but for the sake of the show, we'll bring it up. Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez being one of the only Latinos in the NFL, like, ever, okay, he's, he's not very many, mm-hmm. but, um, of course, I mean, you know, there's a few more, but, you know, about 10 years ago. He he was actually gang related. Come to find out, really? Uh, yeah, he went to he grew up in the streets of Boston or like up in the Massachusetts area. Went to Florida, got away from everything for a while. Where was he? Where, where does he get drafted to? The New England Patriots. And where are they? 
in Boston, right back home where all the things he left actually were. Mm. So he got out of the hood and then drafted right back to the hood. I mean, not saying Boston's not a, 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 you know not a good area, but I'm just saying there's bad parts of all all, all the yeah. places and everything. And unfortunately, he got caught up in something that he just that was his thing, you know, and is what it is. But um, got caught up in something that you know became him. And he was affiliated from what, at least from, this is from what I got from the Netflix series, you know, but, uh, he went on and, um, killed a guy in a parking lot one night. Oh, man. A couple years into his career. He was an amazing tight end and was tried and was convicted in the first degree, premeditated murder. I believe it was first degree is what they charged him with. And he was in prison. And after he finally got his final sentence, I think, or right before, somewhere right around there, he hung himself in his cell. Dang. He was like 30-something. Dang, so young. Actually, probably in his late 20s, I think. Oh, wow. Late 20s or early 30s, somewhere right around there. And this wasn't very long ago. I think, actually, this is not, I'm sorry, it's like 10 years. This is in the last 10 years. I forgot when this was, but, yeah. And what happened? They did They did a, a autopsy. He had CT. Dang. I'm not saying that anybody, not anybody can just go kill somebody because they can, but... But we even saw the... I mean, I'm not condoning that either. It's just crazy, though, and it's sad, is that they lo- they're they losing themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's just... I've seen... So, I mean, they've showed some of the other players who, who experienced the CTE, mm-hmm. and they know something is wrong with them. They're like, something is not right with me. Like, I can't remember anything. And it's just like they're fighting with themselves and unfortunately drags them to, you know, or brings them to, you know, killing themselves, which is so sad. And it's just, I wish that there was something that, you know, that they can do to at least treat them. Hopefully, you know, Mm -hmm. praying that they'll find a solution to these things. But I mean, for one thing, though, is that to take these precautions in the games. No matter what sport you're playing, how sad, right? Very. And it's hard because it's hard to even. It's hard to even. Once again, you can't diagnose it until you die. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't show on the scan. Doesn't show. And once again, what are we gonna do with sports? You can't do anything. You're moving full speed. I mean, mm-hmm. what, what are you gonna? How do you? How do you protect them? How do you protect athletes? So, um, Taryn says here, one of my friends. One of my friends who got to play at Ohio State had to medically retire as well because of concussions and other injuries. He never got to play. He never got to play a college volleyball match, Dang. so he got recruited, went there, and unfortunately for him, couldn't play. Wow, sad. That's 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 a bummer. And the Andrew. Oh, by the way, Ohio State's a major men's volleyball school, major, babe, like major. So yeah, so that sucks. And then Andrew says here, look up a picture of. Uh, P. Jack Sharp, I believe, or Jack, I don't know, I want to butcher his name, but, and the reason why he wears a special helmet in soccer. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. Something happened to him then. Aaron Hernandez died back in 2017. He was 27. Wow. So there you go. See? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And then Darren says here, uh, Dana Retke, a Wisconsin, I'm doing my, that name sounds familiar, a Wisconsin volleyball standout said she accidentally gave a concussion to another girl back in back in high school off a hit of Ugh. the ball. She must have a hammer of a fist. Mm-hmm. Um, and she felt horrible. At least Dana apologized to the girl and the parents. Oh, that's good. Baby, you gotta see a volleyball spike. Like, mm-hmm. they don't play. No, like... I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, they do not play. Like, these ladies get... Well, I'm saying guys, too, but we're going to talk about a lady here. But, my goodness, they get so high off the ground. And all of that momentum just, like, slam. I mean, it's it's incredible to see how high they get off the ground. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at mm-hmm. this. Look at that. Wow. That is an incredibly high jump. But, mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah, you get a spike to the face. Uh, yeah, no, that's probably not the best feeling, you know? <laughs> and, um, but, okay, so, now that we've kind of pretty much got through the whole movie, let's talk about a couple things that, at least the NFL, because, once again, the NFL, this is centered around the NFL, but, once again, other sports, though, other sports, 
you know, have endured mm-hmm. it. But let's talk about a couple of rule changes now. So the football fills 100 yards. The football, the, the ball used to be kicked off from the 20. Or, sorry, from the 30 yard line on this side and kicked over here. Okay? Mm-hmm. If the ball, so the ball usually sails right around the near of the end zone on the other side and this player brings it out. What a kickoff is, is very simple. You've seen it. Kickoff, and then one runs downfield and smacks everybody, which is mm-hmm. where a lot of collisions happen, ugly collisions. And then, of course, the player holding the ball is running full speed, while these guys are also running full speed. Those mm-hmm. collisions are really, usually pretty nasty. Mm-hmm. But if the ball actually sails out of the other side of the end zone, it's called a touchback. In this team now, who the ball went out of the back of the end zone, they, their offense will now start on the 20-yard line. So it's like, well, if, if if I'm in the end zone, the ball sails over my head. Well, I can't go get it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Around the field. Well, now the ball now the ball is set on the 20 yard line, and that's where the offense starts of this team. And they have 80 yards to go to get a touchdown. Well, you know, to to the end zone, the other end zone. Well, what did they do? They actually moved the kickoff from the 30 to the 40 now on this side, and. They're actually not spotting the ball on the 20 anymore when it goes out of bounds. On the 25, they're spotting it. Do you see what they're trying to do? No, what? Okay. So, if the original spot, once again, I think it was the 35. 30 to 35. But they moved the ball five, th- 30, th- 5 to 10 yards up. And the ball is getting kicked to this player standing in the end zone. Of course, you have the kickoff return team here. If the ball is getting kicked from this distance, it's more than likely going to start dying right here. Uh-oh. And this guy can actually catch it and run out. Uh-huh. Well, they moved it up five five yards. up. So that way, because usually they would kick it, and the ball would get right... All, on, on average, on average, the ball would make it too close to the end zone. Uh-huh. But if it's close to the end zone, what are we going to do? Ball's coming, ball's coming, they're still over there. I'm going to take off with it. So, what they're trying to do is, um, they don't want to take off, kick off out of the game. Mm-hmm. Which I understand that. But, they're trying to discourage the returner to take it out. Oh. So, usually if the ball is coming and he catches it over here... He'll if it's close to the if it's close to the line, he'll take it and just take off with it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the time, what happens if the ball carrier gets hit? Because once again, they start on the twenty, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if he gets if he's in the end zone or close to the line and he gets hit before the twenty, what should he have just done? Just not taking the ball out, right? Mm-hmm. Well, take a knee. I didn't explain it to you, but take a knee <laughs> or just let the ball go. Uh-huh. Because, think about it. So it's a gamble, okay? So if he takes the ball out of the end zone, let's say he catches the ball in the end zone and wants to take off with it, and he gets hit on the 13, well, you just screwed us by, what is that? You just screwed us by 12 yards. Because if you got hit at the 13 and you took it out of the end zone, you could have just taken a knee and we could have started on the 25. Mm. See what I mean? Uh-huh. Now we got to fight for those 12 yards. Uh-huh. So... And on top of that, it was the 20 before. Now they want to make it. Now they've made it to where you start on the 25, not the 20. So do you see what they're trying to do? I think so. Okay, so I, I, got, I need a visual. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. A bit more, a bit more, I got it. I have a little football rug in the room right here. So. Oh, gosh. Here we go. All right. So we have the, the end zone and the ball. Here's all the players right here on the 30. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or the, this, is, this is the 30 right here. So here, and then here's the kickoff return team, and here's the guy back here. The boom, boof, the ball gets kicked. All these guys are sprinting. These mm-hmm. guys are all trying to block for him, and this guy's right here, and the ball's coming, 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 coming right here somewhere, and then he'll, if it's coming right here somewhere, he'll take it and then take off running with it. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? If they move the ball up, but if the ball, he kicks it, and the ball goes out here, or the ball goes, or he catches it and takes a knee, in here, mm-hmm. that means he's just forfeiting it, and the ball it used to be on the twenty where they start. Mm-hmm. Well, now they've moved up the field. They've moved it up from the thirty to the thirty-five. So the kickoff is actually right here now, or no, right here now instead of back here. It's up, it's, it's it's up more. Mm-hmm. So boof, they kick it, and it goes far. So it'll either go out of the end zone, 
mm-hmm. touch back and they'll and, and they'll start up here. Or if he catches it in the end zone, he can take a knee because it's already too deep. He'll take a knee. Used to be the twenty where they would start. Now they're making it twenty five where they start. So what they're trying to do is by moving the kickoff up five yards and by rewarding this man for taking a knee or letting the ball go and giving him five extra yards on what he would have gotten, Mm -hmm. is trying to discourage the kickoff. Oh. They're trying to discourage the ball from coming out. Mm Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay. So, that's what they want to do. They want to discourage the ball from coming out because we've, we've learned that the kickoff is actually probably one of the most nastiest plays out there. You see a lot of hits. You see a lot of nasty hits. Uh-huh. And overall, that is a big thing. Um, huge. And it's it's something that I feel is really helping, helping shortening concussions because, once again, you're getting a full speed sprint uh-huh. down the field. And if you're going helmet to helmet with somebody, that's more than likely a concussion. Uh-huh. Remember, sledgehammer. So, see the kickoff? So sorry. Okay, kick off, boom, and see how it goes all the way over here. Mm-hmm. Now see him over here. See how he actually ran out. Uh-huh. Well, if he would have gotten hit over here, so over here, so the ball is in the end zone. He mm-hmm. can just take a knee, and the offense will start up here. But he wanted to bring it out. Guess what? If he got right here, he mm-hmm. just lost his team a whole bunch of yards oh. when he could have just taken a knee uh-huh. or let the ball go out. But instead, he brought it out, and the ball he would they would have started right here. Mm-hmm. See how far up they would have started? Mm-hmm. But look, he took it off course. That was a return. I mean, gone. The Super Bowl, actually. But he took off. But you Dang, see... That dude can run. He's fast, right? <laughs> but do you see but see how ugly the game, how the play is, though? Yeah. Look at that. Full speed sprint down the field. hmm And then all of these players are running full speed at him. hmm See how fast he's running? Yeah. And you see how fast the other guys are running towards him? Yeah. Do you think there's some nasty collisions that happened in there? So, I wouldn't doubt it. So they're trying to discourage that from happening. They don't want to get rid of the play, because mm-hmm. even like myself, I'm like a football purist. I would, I, if there wouldn't be no kickoff, I'd be like, pissed. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I'd be like, hell no, like, no, 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 put that back. But, they're trying to do something to make it a little better, so I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Also, punting when they punt the ball and the guy returns the ball as well. Anytime where there's a anytime where there's a lot of full sprints at each other from a long distance, they're mm-hmm. trying to limit those plays. Uh-uh. Punting on, I haven't really done anything for that. But they've done that. But then there's also another side to this. And here's the other side. The other side is protection by rules. Mm-hmm. And this, is irrita- this actually irritates me. The other night, I'm glad we watched it together. Well, last week... The national championship. Uh-huh. Remember a specific play in that game where a player dropped his head and targeted? Yeah. And he was thrown out of the game? Yeah. That's another one of the rules they made because of this concussion That's movie. good, though. Because they also know that concussions are a real thing. Good. There's players. They are. There's players, and I'm sorry to say this, but there's a guy that I don't like very much by the name of Vontez Berfick. And he actually was one of the dirtiest players in the NFL. He would always leave with his helmet and try to knock you out, basically. Oof. Always leave with his helmet. That's not right. You're trying to... Well, it's not even... Well, it's... Yeah, he's hurting the other person, but he's also hurting himself, too, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, of course he is, but if you're... I mean, he is, but he's just... I mean, I don't know. Some of these, some of these plays are just... I mean, some of these hits are just so nasty. It's like, wow. Like, you really, really couldn't, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, you couldn't leave with the shoulder. See that? <sighs> that's shoulder. A couple of big hits right here. Boom. That's shoulder. That's legal. Shoulder. That's legal. Okay. Well, that's just, well, that's a big truck. But some of these plays, boom. I'm going to show you a Vontaze Perfect hit. Um, and this is one of the biggest, nastiest plays we've ever seen. And he actually, you see the body of Massacre actually go limp. And I want to look this up. Oh, there's the punt. This is what happens. Remember I told you about fair catch? Mm-hmm. Don't fair catch. Oh, my gosh. That happens to you. That's why when the ball is coming, wave. See how fast he's coming at him? <laughs> so I'm just saying, okay, those plays happen. So that's why football can be pretty dangerous. So, pretty you yeah. mean really dangerous? Yeah. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna show perfect hit, um, real quick to Cecilia because this play 
was just nasty. And I think it was, I'm not sure if it was, I thought it was Masqua, but um, the bot, the play where you see Perfect actually, he goes limp. Uh, Perfect hits him and, and the player goes hit uh, limp. And no, that wasn't it. That's actually, you can see this though. Now watch what happens here. I'm not trying to pick on Perfect guys. I'm just saying, this was actually a concussion. And this was on Brown, Antonio Brown. Okay, so watch this illegal hit. Okay, boom. He actually led with his head. Uh-huh. Oh, his head went all wobbly, too. Watch his head. Boom. Now yeah. watch his body. Limp. Just dropped. Ah. Uh. Now watch what he does. See how he tries with... The, he, see how he leads on purpose? Yeah. He's leading with his yeah. head on purpose. And then you see, you see Brown's body just go limp. I, I When I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, but... And once again, okay, I'm not a big fan of Perfect. I'm not. I'm really not. I will defend him in a little bit, saying you can't stop momentum. Momentum's hard to stop, but you're running full speed. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're just going to hit heads. It's going to happen. So I'm not demonizing him. I'm just saying that he's had a couple of suspicious hits that I'm like, dude, you know what I mean? Like, you mm-hmm. maybe could have not hit him like that. But, um, but, uh, there is another play where you can see. Well, anyway, so I'm just going to, you know, stop that there. But regardless, there are some actual plays, though. For instance, Ruffy and the Passer. While they're trying to protect the quarterback. That's when the quarterback... Remember how you asked me in the, in the national, in the national uh, championship game that when the quarterback throws the ball, mm-hmm. these guys still hit him? Mm-hmm. Well, it depends on the referee. If I'm running full speed and he throws the ball and I just happen to hit him because I have nowhere to go, then I get a flag for roughing the passer and now it's a five-yard penalty on me and I just couldn't stop? What's that about? Mm-hmm. I couldn't stop. I'm not trying to hurt him. Sometimes they are. Okay, so if it's throw, hit. Ah, okay, well, that's it is what it is. But if it's throw, then he gets hit. Okay, you could have stopped. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? But some of these referees are so keen on the damage thing, on the on the protecting the player thing, that it gets a little ridiculous sometimes. So I'll be out there running full speed, and I accidentally hit him, even though it was a tad bit late, and now I get a penalty. Really? I mean, I can understand both sides, but I mean, they're doing their best too, which I think is good. They are. To protect the players. At least they're doing their job. No, it's true. And sometimes... I know it could probably be tedious, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to protect the team. No, it's true. The players. I agree. I I agree, but sometimes safety gets a little out of hand. And Mm. it it can, because a couple days ago... I'd rather be too safe than sorry, though. I agree. No, I agree. I mean, I, I just, I just really. For instance, okay, last week, Lionel Messi, one of the greatest players in soccer. Okay, Andrew talked to we talked about this a couple days ago. Lionel Messi, the entire game, and this is what I don't like because some people get protected a little too much, and then some people don't get protected at all. Mm-hmm. And this this goes this is a little controversial and this is going outside of the concussion thing for a little bit. But this is what we're talking about with certain referees that are like, dude, what are you doing? So, for instance, okay, Lionel Messi, one of the greatest players in the game today. Well, what happens? He apparently in this game, this happened just five days ago or a couple days ago. He gets thrown out of the game and got his first ever red card in his career. I mean, he got thrown out. He's gonna get suspended for a couple of games now. Mm-hmm. Well, what? happened why did he get thrown out of this game let's take a quick look here right here boom watch what he does to him grabs him i think he did but i want to get into this because yeah right here right here that's messy and let's watch the replay okay he ran at him and he hit him in the back of the head Oh. With his fist, it looked like. Ouch. When he was running, 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 and boom, punch him uh. in the back of the head as he went down. Okay. Let's be real. Okay, he punched him in the back of the head. Mm-hmm. That was uncalled for. You're not even supposed to use your hands in soccer, okay? <laughs> yeah, no. But, you want to know why he did that? Why? The whole game up to that point, the other team, Atletico Bilbao, the other team that I was playing against, the entire game... The other players were hitting him, sly tackling, playing very aggressive with him, and the referees did not a single thing about it. Uh. He did that. 
I, I don't know how many minutes that was into the game, but they pushed him to the point where he was like, you know what? The referees aren't protecting me. Uh-huh. I'm protecting myself. And he got pissed. He got fed up, and apparently he punched homeboy in the back of the head. So basically he was speaking up for himself. He had to. Nobody else was speaking up for him. He was probably, apparently Andrew told me he was taking slide tackles. He was taking all kinds of hits on the soccer field. And he was getting up like, ref, hello, like, hello. You just, oh, nothing, play on. Play on? And Maybe ha- they were biased. Well, they might have been. But you see, though, safety? But they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. Why do we have Or they're not supposed to be. Messed up, right? Mm-hmm. So, do you see that, though? Mm-hmm. So, that's when we say it gets a little too far sometimes. Yeah. Now, I want your thoughts on that. On the safety thing, where the, where the referees are being a little too much. Where t- they're taking the game out of the game, basically. Like a late hit that really wasn't that late. Or something like this, where if you're going to be safe and try to protect players, protect all of them. What do you think? Oh, well, yeah, they should protect all of them. That's their part of their job, so they need to do what they're getting paid for, so not be biased and take sides or whatever, but protect all of the teams. I mean, especially if they want, you know, the team to stay around. <laughs> not that that would stop them, but yeah. Um, what was the other one? Uh, the, like, the late hits. Oh, like, like the late hit. hits? Or being too safety? Being too safety in a game, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean... I guess that would kind of take the fun out of the sport is just being too cautious, but that would be hard. Hence, that's why I wouldn't be a referee. <laughs> there would be no game. <laughs> I'm right. just kidding. But... Stop hitting him! I can already know. Oh, dog, you can see it already. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, yeah. First tackle um, of the game. You're mean! Throws him out. Oh, my gosh. That would be her. Oh, my gosh. You guys, you don't even know. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I guess you can be a little too cautious and too safe, but I've, I don't know, that one's, I'm in the middle with that one. Um, I feel like it's good, but I guess, yeah, I could take the fun out of it. So, I mean, I think it just, use your best judgment, I guess. I agree. And try to do the best that you can to not, you know, uh, take it too, you know, take it overboard basically i completely agree and yeah god dang it vonta's perfect yeah vonta's perfect was yeah that guy once again i'm not condoning he was a great player but uh do you know where he is now babe? no they threw him out of the league because of suspicion because of all those hits he was making mm-hmm. they tossed him out of the league well yeah i mean if he wasn't getting the idea or the hint then i mean he yeah because that's not cool, because he's hurting others, and he's hurting himself. He is. No, I mean, who knows? He probably has... What is it called again? Uh, I hope he doesn't. CTE? Yeah, I hope he doesn't. Without realizing it. Yeah. And I always thought for, for the best but for Vontaze Perfect. Honestly, the guy is an amazing athlete who is a freak of nature. I mean, a monster among men on the football field. The problem is, is just the way he likes to hit, mm-hmm. where he's trying... Literally, it looks like he's literally trying to hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. He's trying to leave with his head... He's trying to knock someone out on that field. Mm-hmm. There's no room for that. No. And, and that's not cool. So whether he was playing... It, it, to me, it looked like that, okay? Because like, you've seen it. I've seen him do it many times on the football field. I've seen him. But same exact time, he's an amazing athlete. But mm-hmm. it's like, dude, do you really have to do that? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I would be all for him coming back and playing in the NFL. I was just, can you not leave with your head no more? And Yeah. You know, so... But there's been a lot of suspicion of that. With a lot of players. Like, for instance, in the National Championship, when we walked a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. what would happen? That guy dropped his head. Mm-hmm. And what did happen? He threw him out. So, obviously, after... What's the doctor's name again? I forget it. Amalu. Amalu. Mm-hmm. So, after he has brought this up to their attention, they have made rules then, obviously. I mean, I've seen it there. Mm-hmm. Not just on the movie, but the game that we watched. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they do take it seriously now. Actually... I want to show, I want to show my beautiful Cecilia here another clip where this is going to be funny because she's going to be like, what? Because honestly, this is me too. I would do this too. And I don't really care. But now the game has to stop when this happens. I give zero Fs when it comes to this because I'll play this. I'll do this all day long. Take a quick look here. And I hope you can see really well and it's kind of blurry, but take a look what happens. Look at the guy carrying the ball. His helmet came off. Mm-hmm. Let me let me go ahead and replay that again uh, because that was absolutely awesome. I know, not condoning it, guys, not condoning it. But this man, 
with, and I want to get to that to that highlight. There's, there's been others, but I want to get to that highlight, okay? Because this is absolutely insane. <laughs> Here we go again. Is this it? No, this is not it. But, oh man, I'm trying to get to it. I think it probably might be number one. Okay, there he is running with the ball. What happens to him? He got tackled. No, his helmet came yeah, off. Yeah, I know, that's why I said and his he, helmet came off. But he kept playing. Oof. He was running with the ball. He was running with the ball. And he uh, actually was running with the ball and kept going for the first down. That's crazy. And he got the first down. They counted that? With no helmet. He didn't care. He got the first down. And he was there like, oh, he's fine. He's got the helmet. So, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. So take a look at it really closely. Zoom in. His helmet comes off, and he's still running with the ball. Runs, runs, first down, gets it. It's only a few yards, but he got the ball. He got the first down. Okay. Mm -hmm. The new rule is if your helmet comes off, the play is over. Good. So if someone loses their helmet in a game. Wait, how do they even lose their helmet, though? Isn't that, like, around your neck or no? No, the chin strap, right here. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So if it pops off and the helmet comes off. Oh, so it's just a button. It's just two buttons. Oh. Two snaps on each side. One, two, three, four. Snap, 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 snap. Or, or up, up on top. Mm -hmm. I usually have to put mine up here. But we got a little snap, snap action, and that's it. And oh. put a little snap on there. And guess what? Sometimes your helmet's going to come off. And then it comes <laughs> off during a play. You, usually, they before the referees, we just let them play. Mm -hmm. Well, now they're like, no, you can't do that. Good. Yeah, it's for the player's protection. For the player's protection. And another rule is, if you do have a concussion, or if you have symptoms of a concussion, mm -hmm. you can no longer play, and you cannot return to football until you are clear, medically cleared that you do not have a concussion any longer. That's good. I like that. They're protecting their players, which they are supposed to do. They, I feel like they're obligated to. Mm -hmm. Not even just obligated, but they they need to take care of their teams, their players. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it is sad, though, what the doctor had to go through. I mean, he went through, him, you know, just to bring it to the NFL's attention mm -hmm. about concussion. Crazy, right? Yeah. So, but he made it still. He did, and that was pretty cool, and I'm really proud of Ma uh, Malu and what he did, and I thought that was amazing. Took a lot of courage, too, but what happened, and what happens with all this is, is very simple. We just got to make the game as best as we can safer, and that's football, but that's any other sport, too. No, we're, yeah. We're zeroing around football because it's so tough, but we were also failing, like you said, I think a lot of people fail to realize that all these other hits. Yeah. Okay. It's all sports. It's all sports. Do you think people in NASCAR get concussions? I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? On 190 some miles an hour around a track, those cars flip and fly. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I think concussion's a little bit least of your issues because you can die in that car. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So it's scary. But all, all athletics, you know there's a risk in there. And that's Well, at least scary. now they know. Because it's all what? They, it didn't come to the realization until what? You said 2001, 2002 or 2002 something? 2002 was when this whole thing happened. With so, the yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't that far along, so... It wasn't. Yeah. But mm -hmm. at least now, you know, uh, athletes know what they are signing up for. They sure do. And they can kind of prepare themselves and try to prevent it a little. Or take care of themselves now that, you know, the um, people won't let them play if they show any symptoms of it. Absolutely. To protect their brains. Absolutely. From a long-term, you know, and disease. You know, for the 50th time tonight, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But the same as that time, it's athletics. And this yeah. is what we do. We're athletes. We play. We know the risks. Mm -hmm. But we do the best we can to play as safely as we can. Yeah. True. A lot. I used to use my head a lot on the line. I used to smash and bash. And then it started happening. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that no more. Yeah. Because though you can use your head as a weapon, maybe it's not the smartest it's thing. It's not to really do. worth the cost, though. It's not. I'd much rather lose the game and than to have used my head to, mm -hmm. and to have lived many, many years and to not have a brain, not to not have brain damage. So yeah. Um. So anyway, with that said, y'all, uh, that was I know a little bit of a different kind of show today, but uh, I'll tell you. This has really been pretty fun. I uh, I tell you, this this is always it's always a great great um, 
Always a great time on Friday nights here with Cecilia. We're having a good time, having some fun talking here. But... With that, Ed, we do have the NFC Championship coming up on Sunday, followed by the AFC Championship. Four teams, y'all, and then there were four. Of course, starting things off on Sunday afternoon. I hope Cecilia would love to be here with me to watch these two games. But we have the championship games here. Uh, Tampa Buccaneers, this is it, y'all. One of these four teams will be the Super Bowl champion. We have Buccaneers taking on the Packers and the Bills taking on the Chiefs. The winner of these two games will be heading on over to Super Bowl Sunday coming up in just a few more weeks. And one of these teams will be crown champion. Cool. The Buccaneers. I think we should have a little bit of fun here at the end of this. This has been such a serious episode. Which is good, though. It is. It is. It's good to talk about those serious topics. Well, that's true, because sometimes they get overlooked. Yeah, they do. And as we can see... Those were overlooked for quite some time until Dr. Amalu made things happen. Even opened a- eyes. And even after he opened eyes, they didn't want to believe it. And they rejected him. No, of him. course not. I think people are just more afraid of the unknown, that's why. Mm. I mean, even though he gave him the proof, gave them, I mean, the proof and the knowledge of it, all the science. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were just more afraid of, like, well, if we tell people the truth, they're not going to want to play the sport, which is not true at all. No. People are still going to want to play the sport. That's it. Because they love it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you said you'd never seen this movie before until today. I didn't you said you were low key scared. I didn't want to see it because of the truth behind of um, it all. But has it changed your mind about playing the sport? I still want to play one hundred percent. See, it doesn't. It won't change anybody's mind. But just with more caution now. Well, see, yeah, it opens people's eyes, and people really need to realize the dangers mm-hmm. of sports. It's so, in general. No, I completely agree, Ben. And I'm I'm glad we got to watch that. So, we've watched three movies already. A couple of games. We watched Friday Night Lights. Last week was when the game stands tall. And this week, Concussion. Mm-hmm. They're all very different. Mm-hmm. Well, the first two were kind of similar. This one was a little bit out there. A little differently. But, first of all, what do you give Concussion? What's your grade? I give it an A+. Plus oh, A+. Plus. That so, was really good. A very eye-opening movie. It was. It was. So, you gave... Friday Night Lights and A. Mm-hmm. In the last two weeks, when the game stands tall, you just loved that movie. You were yeah, that one was really good too. <laughs> and this week, Concussion, there are two A pluses. I'm mm-hmm. gonna give this one an A plus too because it's very true. I, I love how it just can open eyes. But okay, but so let's have a little bit of fun here at the end of this one, shall okay. we? So the four teams remaining, of course, playing on Sunday. One game at twelve, twelve oh five. The other one's at three forty, mm-hmm. and by six forty p.m. On Sunday night, we're going to have our two teams going Super Bowl, and two of these are going to be so close yet so far. Mm-hmm. So, I want to have some fun with Cecilia, because our very first show, even though it was an episode of The Defining Moment, not necessarily one of our... So, this is, technically, this is actually our fourth show together, but it's, you know, the, the actual episode of uh, of the Sports Club Perspective. I want to have some fun here, and... I want to sell you to actually pick the winner of these games by their jerseys. By their jerseys. Because of what? Because if she likes them or not. Oh, gosh. So, remember we had the, the jersey episode? Yeah. Well, now here are those four, four teams, and we're going to see if these are jerseys you actually liked or not. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The Tampa Buccaneers will be taking on the Green Bay Packers. Guess what? Tampa Buccaneers. Remember these uniforms? Mm-hmm. They made it to the final four of the NFL. That's cool. Do you like them? Do you like them? They're okay. They're okay. Mm-hmm. What do you not like about them? I think it's... What color is that? Black? Pewter. Oh, yeah. That's it's right. Like, pewter. Remember? Pewter. It's like this brown gray. I think it's that. I don't I don't like the pants. You don't like the pants? Uh-huh. They just look kind of funny, huh? Mm-hmm. So, let's see if you like this one, though, better than the team they're taking on. The Green Bay Packers! My mom's favorite jersey to not like. They're okay, too. They're okay? Mm-hmm. So there's the Packers. I mean, their colors are not all that bad. What do you not like about it? I mean, there's really nothing not to like about it. It's just, I don't know. Okay. So if you got to pick between this jersey... And the other one? And this jersey. Let's do Tom Brady's because he's going to be taking on... Oh, gosh darn it. Now I guess lost it. But and then there's a the color rush and everything. But this jersey... Which one are you taking? I think I would do the green Packers. Are you taking the Packers? Yeah. Well... That's a good team to take because they are the monster team right now. They're the team to beat, so oh, really? they might win. They might win it all in a couple of weeks. 
But then again, Tom Brady, the legend, the goat, if you will, mm-hmm. from, the pa- from the Patriots, he's now on this team now. And at 44 years old, I think, the man is a monster, and he's still doing well. But uh, So you're taking the Packers over the Buccaneers based on the colors. Mm-hmm. Okay. And to think you liking red. I think it's just the way that they color matched it, though. <laughs> this is great. No, no bueno. No bueno. Oh, here we go again. Tara says, yes, I can bring back... <laughs> the I see another loser. <laughs> and good for you, Taryn. We're going to be ringing the bell for you tonight. <laughs> That's right, y'all. Our new sound effect. Big ups to Carol, by the way, for telling us to bring in the cowbell. How do we get a cowbell sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, there is the first one. There is the first one. Uh, the So, yeah, the Green Bay Packers... You like their jersey better than the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills. And then in the other game, the AFC Championship, the Buffalo Bills. Do you remember that really dark blue color you did not like? No. You'll have to refresh my memory. I'm going to refresh your memory because you did not like these jerseys at all. Oh, yeah. No, I don't like that color blue. Why not? I mean, I like blue. There's nothing wrong with blue. I guess it's just the different shades of it all. It looks, I don't know, it looks almost close to black. You did not like this, these uniforms last week, or last time. But then here's the other version. Is that the color rush? No. Well, oh. yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it is, but this is the other jerseys they wear. The one they wear now. And oh, then they should stick with that one. These are what they wear. And remember you yeah, said that. Yeah, those ones are nice. You like these. You said you like these a lot. Last time you said these were way better. Yeah. I like that one more. You like that better? Yeah. Okay. And they're taking on... The Kansas City Chiefs, which are the classic red on white with a little bit of yellow in there. These. Those ones are not bad either. Yeah. So, based on what you just saw, those versus these. Which one are you taking? I like the other team. Taking the red? Yeah. Taking the Chiefs? Yeah. Well, just so you know. Okay, so now we're going to have some fun with it. The Tampa Buccaneers, their only Super Bowl victory with the, 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 the red and the pewter was in 2003 versus my Raiders, where they ate the Raiders like a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> 52 to 20. 21. Oh, wow. And that was a lot of controversy surrounding that season. Mm. John Gruden was the head coach of the Raiders the year before. He got fired. Where'd he go? The Buccaneers. Oh. And where did he meet them? In the Super Bowl. And he destroyed them in the Super Bowl. How do you like that? That's crazy. Crazy, right? Twist of fate, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what happens? Don't fire people. <laughs> no, but that happened. The last time they won the Super Bowl was 2003. We were both in high school. We were young. Mm-hmm. 2002, 2003. 2003, so middle school, high school. Okay, so, um, with that said, guess what? That's the Tampa Buccaneers. The Green Bay Packers? The last time they made the last time they won a Super Bowl was in 2011. Mm-hmm. They made it in the playoffs by the skins of their teeth. And guess what? They fought through the playoffs. Usually, if you if you play high and you're like you know you you're seated high and everything, they fought. They barely made. It. I think they, I think that's what they were. They barely made it in, and they freaking won. They beat a Steelers team. Remember the Steelers? Mm-hmm. They beat a very tough Steelers team and won it all in 2011. It's the last time they won it. It's 2021, ten years uh-huh. ago. Um, so there we go. The Buffalo Bills. This franchise, remember I told you about this team? The franchise went to, went to and remember you said too? Because I told you they used to play in, in, those, dark, in those dark blue uniforms. Uh-huh. And then I told you what happened. You're like, that's probably why, because they were wearing those. <laughs> 1990, or 91, 92, 93, and 94. They went, to, they went to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. four times, and they lost four times yeah. in a row. Uh-huh. That team. And the last time they made the playoffs, or the last time they won a playoff game, I think was in 2000, I forgot when, but uh, this past January, they won their first playoff game in 18 years. Wow. And now here they are at the championship game before the Super Bowl. And then, of course, Kansas City Chiefs, 1971 was the last time they won a Super Bowl. Last (laughs) year, they won it all for the first time since then, getting their second Lombardi trophy. Oh, wow. So they're going ahead. Mm-hmm. So now that I've given you the history on them, now that Cecilia has picked by the jerseys, she has the Buccaneers losing to the Packers. So Buccaneers won 2003. Sorry, not this year. She has the Packers that won 10 years ago going back. 
in the NFC Championship, and then in the AFC Championship, she's like, "Hey, Bills, that's cute." No, no see, this is this is kind of mean for Cecilia, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna give her the reason why she's a little mean right now. What? <laughs> because the team that went to Super Bowl four years in a row and lost every single time and won their first playoff game in 18 years, you're saying they're gonna lose? <laughs> I'm <laughs> not saying that. You don't like their jerseys. Just because I don't like their jerseys doesn't mean that's going to make them lose. Uh, you said their dark blue ones made them lose. Whatever. But, um, but uh, what do you call it? And then the team, of course, wearing the red, the Chiefs, the team that won it all last year, and you have them going. If that is the truth, because some people think it's going to be Super Bowl, mm-hmm. if it's the Chiefs and the Packers, believe it or not, we'll go back all the way to 1967. Super Bowl one, the Chiefs actually played the Packers in Super Bowl one, and we could get a repeat this year, according to your prediction. Mm. And if that does happen, the last time they played in Super Bowl, the, the Packers did beat the Chiefs. So, I want I want your I want your uh, Super Bowl champion now. Oh gosh! So once again, we have the Packers. Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. Gosh darn it. Let me just get those uniforms up now. So, we have the green and the... Uh, green and the yellow. Mm-hmm. Taking on... The Chiefs. And their red. Mm-hmm. Which one do you have winning between those two? You want me to guess which um, one I think is gonna win? Which one do you like? Do you want the red ones or do you want the green ones? Which um, one? Which uniform do you like? Bumper, this is all based on uniform. I don't know. I guess the red. The red? Yeah. She says the Kansas City Chiefs are going back to back this year. If that happens, the Kansas City Chiefs will have gone two back to back Super Bowl years, and that'll be the third Super Bowl in franchise history. Cool. And as for the Packers, well. 10 years, and uh, I guess that's... I got to wait another year. 11 years. Mm -hmm. So according to Cecilia, she is taking, by way of jerseys, the Kansas City Chiefs to win this thing. Well, me personally, you have to wait for my prediction, because that's going to be coming up right before the Super Bowl. But I just want to have fun with that (laughs) and bring that up. And I'm pretty sure Taryn's having a ball in the chat room right now. So let's take a look and see what he's saying here. Uh, Yep, look at this. He says here, um, Buffalo Bills dark blue uniforms. I see another loser. (laughs) And I also remember Cecilia doesn't like the Raiders uniforms. Thank you, Taryn, for bringing that up. The woman I will be marrying very, you know, coming up here, coming up, okay, the woman of my dreams does not like my Raiders uniforms. I get it, Taryn. Go ahead and just pour salt in the wound and throw some lemon in there if you, uh, might as well, dude. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Oh my goodness, please stop it. Just hurts, that's all. (laughs) (laughs) But. With that said, y'all, uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up tonight's show. I know we didn't take any any breaks or anything, but we just it was a very serious topic, a lot of fun there. I talked a little bit of sports, and there we have it. So, with that said, y'all, I know I usually do this at the beginning of the show, so my bad, or I, we should, I should be doing this at the beginning of the show, but big ups and thank you to our new... Um, our one of our newest sponsors, as a matter of fact. We've got some new sponsors today, as a matter of fact. Cool, right? Yeah. So, we are now sponsored by a pretty cool name, I'm telling you. This is awesome. This Juline, um, Juline is very, very nice and wanted to throw us, uh, wanted to throw us some sponsorship our way. So, I'll go ahead and read this off here because this is one of the coolest names I've ever seen mm-hmm. about blogging, about yeah. writing, right? We have now, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, IE Sports Radio is now sponsored by the one and only Mom is Always Right Media. And then, of course, Right, W R I T E, not Right, of course, which, I mean, you know, goes together. But, are you feeling overwhelmed with schoolwork? Those essays keeping you up at night? Don't lose sleep. Just pick up the phone. Mom is Always Right Agency will give you uh, quality essays. And we'll always make our deadlines. Sleep soundly, knowing we are on the job. For more information, call 626-653-3644. That's 626 
Once again, you can call 626 626- Six five three three six four nine. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty neat because at the end of the day, I think we know a thing or two about writing papers. Yeah. <laughs> Can definitely use the help, right? Yeah. So for those call for those students out there, so I think that's pretty darn cool. And also, uh, make sure to check out the new episode of It Goes Down in the PM, brought to you by Mom is Always Right Media, where we help you open your business from start to finish. Pretty cool concept, huh? Yeah. And then, of course, don't miss the next chapter of your favorite love story. Check out the season two premiere of Coffee After Dark, brought to you by Mom is Always Right Media, where we help you open your business from start to finish. So once again, we really appreciate them. Thank you to Miss Jeline, and make sure to give them a follow. Now I'm going to throw out their social media accounts. So Instagram, you can follow them at at Mom is Always Right. Once again, that is right with a W R I T E on Twitter. It is, of course, uh, let's see here, Twitter, we have here, uh, M, oh, so it's at M-I-A-W-M-I-N-C, once again, that is at M-I-A-W-M-I-N-C, check them out on, uh, and of course, check out the two shows, It Goes Down the PM, you can follow them at It Goes Down, of course, or It Go Down the PM, and then uh, Twitter for Coffee After Dark is uh, capital C and then a zero, F-E, and then After Dark, of course. So make sure to check them out. It's all one word, all smushed together. So go ahead and show them some love. And then last but not least, uh, Ms. Julian wanted me to throw a note in here that uh, they are making the podcast accessible to the deaf and hard of hearing by posting them captioned on YouTube. It's been a slow process, but IGD, or sorry, IGD, IPM, so it goes down, uh, and the PM has three episodes on YouTube available with captions and three ep- and uh, episode three, she made the videographer transcribe and add captions himself. So if YouTube gets rid of the caption service, all the captions are on our network or on their network and will remain accessible. How cool is that? That is really awesome. I like that. Right. So, podcast will probably to check out there, right? Mm-hmm. See? So, make sure to show them some love, y'all. Big ups to them. Of course, Miss Jolene, great person. She's awesome. Really uh, helping us out. By the way, she is our first ever sponsor, uh, monthly sponsor here. So, we got to give her a hand, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty darn happy about that. So, we have her. And then, of course, you got to show love to our first sponsor. And uh, these cats... Well, they show us love, so we really, really help. They they help us out a lot, so got to go ahead and throw those out there. Big ups to Legacy Financial. Last year was a tough year. However, stay positive. Keeping your faith and continuing to work hard is the goal. If you're in a financial struggle at the moment and need some help, if you're doing well and you want to go to uh, get to the next level, either way, give them a call. Also, if you're looking for a new opportunity uh, to work for yourself and earn more money part time, give them a call. Call Ao, of course, Miss Ao. She's awesome. Give them a call at five one zero nine two eight two one zero four. Once again, that is five one zero. 9282104 to book your appointment today. Andrew and AO are just two people on a mission to help families build a legacy. Catch them, of course, on Twitter at legacy underscore uncut. And uh, once again, that's at legacy underscore uncut. And on Instagram at, uh, at Sims, S I M S underscore uncut. Once again, that is on Instagram at Sims, S I M S underscore uncut. Uncut, and then last but not least, got the one their least, their most uh, recent from today, and this is big time. But um, would you like to make your yearly income, your monthly income? DM them to get more information about upcoming opportunities meeting uh, via Zoom coming up here. So, uh, do you want to become your own boss? Do you like helping people? We're looking for you. DM us to get more information on how. Uh, on our upcoming Zoom opportunities meeting or opportunity uh, meeting via Zoom. So my apologies there. I had to read that twice. Sorry, I read that twice. But really cool guys. It looks also early retirement. Are you waiting on your retirement like Bernie waiting in the snow? <laughs> Don't get left behind. Contact us to uh, to get 
help with your retirement. So big ups to them, of course. Uh, that is Legacy Financial. Got to show them some love, and we really appreciate all their help with all they do and sponsoring all of us here because that's how we keep the lights on here at iSports Sports Radio. So we really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for helping us out, and there you have it. So with that said, had to take care of the. Uh, had to take care of the bills there. Had to pay the bills real fast. But with that said, uh, Deb, any last thoughts, comments, concerns on, on tonight's show? No. Just thank you for listening. You guys take care. Be safe and stay healthy. There you have it, Shaw. Please, that last one, really try your best to stay healthy. Please, please, please. But ladies and gentlemen, with that said, you know the drill. Cue the music, because we're out of here for the night. Got to show some love, of course, to the new track. Yeah, I love the new track. It just sounds so nice, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It just flow with a little, little dance dance. I'm still trying to dance, okay? It's 843. I'm still trying to dance. Cecilia's not trying to dance right now. She's no. just, she's not feeling it. I understand. Hmm. Maybe she'll get some ice cream. <laughs> ice cream sounds good. Ice cream sounds good, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, I think La Misha Ghana closes in just about 20 minutes. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think maybe we should uh, make our way over there. Maybe. What do you guys think? Just kidding. <laughs> With that said, big ups and thank you to all of our listeners here in the chat room. And wow, Taryn is mind blown right now. And by the way, thank you, Taryn. Raiders season this year in four years. Uh, sorry, in four words. Kick in the nuts. <laughs> yes, Taryn. The Raiders season is absolutely, absolutely summed up in those four words. Kick in the nuts. So Taryn says, no way. A company that helps you write papers and essays? Dang. Yay. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll tell you, this is awesome. So great show there in Cecilia to never disappoint. Thank you so very much, Taryn. You two make evenings to be on. Aww. That's sweet. Thank you. We really appreciate that, Taryn. Thank you, sir. Of course, today is, today we have some cool stuff. Taryn, a live a little bit ago. We gotta check uh, catch him for sure. We gotta catch the replay of that. The SoCal Supreme Sports Show. That's on every Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern, right before the show. And of course, the show that starts off on Fridays. Gotta catch them. We gotta catch him, of course, Mr. Andrew Hagenbaugh. The state of Ohio sports every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern. And if he's not live, I mean, of course, we all take breaks now, so it's all good. And we all also gotta give some love, man. We have uh, two new shows. Mm-hmm. On the iSports Sports Radio Network, the Neutral Zone has returned. Big ups to Mr. Uh, Blake Seltzer, and oh, sorry, Blake Seltzer and Adam. Uh, Zin- uh, I don't butcher his name. I got to go over to the banner. I think it's Zinsky. But great guys, man, great people, and I'm so glad that we can uh, talk with them and bring them on. They've also decided to start an SEC show, so all four of them, I'm super excited to bring them on pretty soon here. So once again, those names, I want to make sure that we get those right, especially for the first time I mentioned them here on air. But yeah, big ups to the uh, SEC show, the second to none, SEC, second to none, get it? Um, and then of course, Blake Salser, Jackson Kelly, Adam Ziski, that is, and Chris Mangrum, a.k.a. Flacco. <laughs> of course, they'll be on that show uh, coming up on Monday evenings. And then, of course, on Sunday evenings, The Neutral Zone with Mr. Blake Salser and Adam Ziski. So, there we have it, y'all. Big ups. Gotta catch all of our shows here at iSports Radio. We do the dang thing here. I'll once again, catch us all social media. Follow us all as a whole at iSports Radio on Twitter at iSports Radio. Give us a like on Facebook. We certainly like that. And of course, check us out on Instagram at iSports Radio. Check us out on LinkedIn at iSports Radio as well. And show us all some love, y'all. With that said, that will be that. We will see you next week. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless.